as we're going forward, um, while I'm talking, actively work on your like your grounding and crown relationship with what is comfortable and um, having higher self merge with self. It doesn't have to be your entire higher self, but just the energetic connection. And let yourself sort of feel like what's comfortable. Uh, since we just ate, we're going to be in a slightly different state than we're in before. So things that were comfortable when we're hungry fill my belly. My like, belly's full. Stay away because that might make you queasy. So I'm then like, you know what? It's comfortable for you to wrap your higher self energy around my third eye. Or So while I'm doing the next little bit of talk, play with. Is your root chakra right now more comfortable going deep or wide or just like being light and airy flowing? Is your crown chakra more comfortable being wide or just like allowing a little trickle of divine energy to come in? One nice thing if you're just inviting a trickle of divine energy to flow in is to have it flow into the roof of your mouth and then just let it suckle down your throat. Um, in uh, Hindu practice and Buddhist, we sometimes will put the tip of our tongue on the roof of our mouth and let all the divine mana flow in and you're like suckling it like a baby to go into your throat. And then it's not so much through the energetic pathways as through the physical absorbing to energetic. And you're just letting little divine mana from the heavens flow in. So that might be comfortable for you. Um, you don't need to leave your tongue up there the whole time, or you might get like a Charlie horse in your tongue, <laughs> which, trust me, not fun. But occasionally lift your tongue up for a little while and then let it relax if, if that works for you. Um, I'd say in this case, whatever works for you is what works perfectly at this moment. But invite higher self to be connected with self. Invite self to feel happily light and airy and less, you know, less dense, more one with higher self. And um, I think we've all realized after the last meditation that the difference between self and higher self is not as much as we thought it was. Mm -hmm. That there's a reason why we say we honor ourselves as divine eternal <coughs> beings who are expressing as physical for a short time. For the purpose of having adventures, gaining experiences, knowledge, understanding, and pulling new resonances in that can then be given to self. So what that means is every experience you've had in your life is serving for the growth and evolution of your higher self. Which means that we can value every experience we've had in life. Learn from them and think, how do I use this to keep evolving myself? Which means we don't ever need to judge ourselves. <laughs> Once Life is all about karmic lessons. Once a lesson is complete, the energy is resolved. Self-judgment usually comes in when you're in the middle of a lesson and you don't know where to go. So as you're in the middle of a lesson, say, well, what will it take to complete this karmic lesson? You're like, oh, I need to forgive myself and move on. Lesson complete. Now I'm good for the next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, what I'd like to do, good, perfect timing, is um, we are going to, inviting higher self to merge with self, um, we'll take a moment and feel what resonates in self because um, you know how 
sometimes uh, when you're going around being your best, most vibrant, loving self, people will respond however they respond. They will either respond by saying, whenever I'm around you, I feel like I become my best self. Or they may respond by saying, I want what you have, so I'm going to just try to suck it all out of you. I'm sticking my straw in your energy. <laughs> this is where cord cutting is awesome. Yeah. Because then either they will be connected to you through love and the greediness goes away, or there is no connection and they feel like they're not able to vampire you because there's no connection, so they go to someone else. So cord cutting is awesome for that. Yes. Um, or someone may see you with your highest, most divine love light shining, and all it does is remind them that they are self-loathing, that they have like anger or meanness, that they lack love, and it just magnifies their self-awareness that they lack love, in which case they may try to harm you. They may want to like take you down a peg. I know we've all heard this, like, someone's like, who are you to think you're so good? I'm like, I'm me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I just want to take you down a peg and teach you a lesson. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> it has nothing to do with us. It has to do with them feeling extra ugly or extra horrible or extra unloved in our presence of love. In this situation, um, as Jesus has taught me many times, they will give us energy. This energy may be intended as harmful energy, but it's energy all the same. Their goal is to lower us to their frequency, but we have the ability to have their frequency come to us, and we gobble it and turn it into our frequency magnified. As uh, we were saying yesterday, like the uh, Central and South American shamans who work with uh, not Gaia or Mother Earth, but Pacamama, who is, of course, Mother Earth. And they say she absorbs all, she loves all energy and immediately converts it to the highest level and frequency of love to send to the planet. So whatever you're feeling, send it to Pacamama. The, the, way, the way it was taught to me is, if you have anger or distress, send it to Pacamama and she will gobble it up. She loves it as she loves chocolate. Always just like, she eats it up like chocolate. And then it becomes magnified tenfold as love and she sends it off to the creatures of Earth to then resonate with. What do you say eats it up? Uh, meaning if I'm like, I am so angry. Earth, take my energy. I don't want it in here. I'm giving it to Earth. We think, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to put my toxic energy into Earth. Yeah. Paka Mama takes all energy and eats it as she would chocolate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like if you've heard of the cacao ceremony, like pure chocolate before it's like mixed with sugar and turned to Hershey's. Pure chocolate is one of the most powerful, healthy foods on the planet. It's just once you like emulsify it and mix it with sugar and this, and then it loses its nutritional ability. But pure chocolate is one of the most healthy power foods on the planet. Um, and what they say, the body needs a certain amount of magnesium. Our heart to function fully needs 18 times the amount of magnesium of the rest of our body. The majority of us are walking around on the planet with a magnesium deficient physical heart. This is of shamanic. This is not by any research I can like mention. So this is the shamanic way of teaching. When you eat cacao, it is rich in magnesium. And that's why they say it increases the love because your physical heart is nourished and then can flow with abundance. So understand whatever energy comes to you, you have the ability like Pacamama to eat it up like chocolate 
convert it to the highest level of your best frequency and send it out. So this is something to remember. As you go forward in life, you do not need to put on like the big robe of light and the robe of mirrors and constant self-protection so that you don't absorb anything and you're protected. It's exhausting. And the moment you forget, in comes the attack. Just be receptive as our Pacamama. As anything comes to you, gobble it up. Thank you. Thank you. Magnify it and send it back out. If these people feel like you were a threat before, the moment you send their energy tenfold back to them with the highest level of love, they will either go away, have a total meltdown, or say, huh, I do want some of that, or whatever it is that their life path allows for. You know, we don't know what their life paths are, but that's their life path. Your life path is to feel joyous love. Isn't that the process of conveying that, basically? Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, the old I'm rubber, you're glue. <coughs> whatever you say to me bounces off of me, sticks on to you. There doesn't even have to be a whole gobbling meditation, just the awareness of... <laughs> I'll make one for us. <laughs> I'll put it on YouTube. That's the one that'll get a million hits. <laughs> but if someone sends non-love to me, and trust me, as a female chef, I got lots of that in my workplace everywhere. As they send non-love to me, and I feel the energy of it coming to me, I'm not going to go, oh, no, no, ah. I'm like, oh, look, energy. I'm like, thank you for all this energy. I am hungry. I just like absorb it in. But it may be coming in at this frequency. As it comes to me, I'm like, anything that comes to me, it's coming in through here or through here in this resonance, power it up. I don't even have to, wherever I accept it, automatically converts it. And then I like turn it around, and I'm like, here you go. And someone goes like, oh, and they're like, I think I'm going to the other room now. <laughs> so that energy, you take it and you change it, but most of the time, it's that energy comes and you resist it, push it down. Yeah. Right? Be more like judo. Yeah. Less like, like I studied Taekwondo, and Kim is a, a judo teacher. Um, and, you know, Taekwondo, anything that comes, you're like, bam, bam. It, taekwondo literally translates to kicking and punching. So it's all bam, bam. And then I would hang out with my friend, little Chris, who did judo. And everything that came to her, she was like, there you go. And I'm like, wow, that is like so much easier to flow with the energy than to be constantly kicking and punching. I mean, I loved, I mean, the whole reason I did Taekwondo was to get out all the excess energy I had. So that worked for me at the time. But I think if I were to go back to martial arts now, Judo and Tai Chi would be where I'm at because I no longer need to fight everything <laughs> in my heart. Um, it's a matter of as hostility comes, like think of it this way. Um, if I come to any of you and I'm like, oh, you make me so mad. I'm really angry with you. You're going to draw back. You're like, why is, what? That hurts so bad. You don't even know why I'm angry with you or what. You're immediately feeling pain because you trust me and you love me and we're peers, we're friends. But suppose a two-year-old child that you're looking after, your child, your grandchild, your niece, nephew, whatever, or let's say it's three because they're very articulate now, doesn't want to take a nap and they do want to have a big bowl of ice cream. And the child goes, I'm so mad at you, I hate you, ah! You take the child in your arms, you hug them, you kiss them, you stroke their hair, you sing them a lullaby because you know they need to sleep. And eventually, 
they stop fighting and oh my god the tears and the snot and the and they fall asleep and you lay them down and you, you're like oh i feel so much love the only difference between your reaction to the two is how you receive the energy so whenever energy comes to you that is below the frequency of love you do not have to do anything with it but say i absorb the love you can do a cord cutting each of you now has a cutting implement either on your body or in your body uh, my soul sister diane carries her sword of light in her heart she shoots in there i have a flaming sword in a sheath on my back i can pull it out anytime i know someone else he has a blade that media like a uh, spider-man stuff it comes out of his palm and goes outward i know someone else her hand turns into light her arm and hand turn into light wherever she goes the light just like cleanses everything it's and it can change you know, it doesn't have to be the what you had in the last meditation does not need to remain that way at all times. It can it can change and ebb and flow. Um, and certainly the meditations we did yesterday where we're working on lines of energy that we send from ourselves out to targets. If there is someone coming to me with non love, one technique I can have is open my heart and have my heart send a line of one directional energy to that person, just sending love. Now, I'm not sending my love. I'm sending divine love flowing to my heart, through my heart, to that person. This person may not be willing to receive my love, but the divine love flowing, flowing through me at my direction. And then when I feel like they're receiving enough, I will take that line out of my being and just send it directly to them from divine to them so they have it flowing down into them so i've given them like a, a an iv of divine love it is sh shocking how often this act can calm someone without them even knowing what you're doing yeah yeah, yeah. here's the thing you do not need someone's permission to do energy work on them but it's their choice whether they wish to receive it or not the main reason you ask for permission is so then they know to be receptive but anyone can send love to anyone uh, now having said that like i will not go and do energy healing on you without your permission because you're like, wait, I feel something happening. What's going on? <laughs> Who's doing what where? You know, it, it, it can be very invasive. However, and I would have no need to because I don't know what you need or don't need. Now, I might say, hey, I'm feeling there's a little something here. And if you'd like, I can show you a technique or I can do it on you and explain to you. Like, I prefer teaching people to be self-managing. I don't see any issues. I see only goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, you can still send love to anyone and you can still invite guides, guardians, God, the universe to send love to someone. They have the right to like, like, oh, what's this manna from heaven? Cut it, cut it, cut it. Like, they don't have to receive it if they don't want. But, you know, uh, just like Black Cat and Donovan. You know, Black Cat loves Donovan, wants to be best friends. Donovan thinks Black Cat is annoying. So Black Cat constantly follows Donovan going, hi, want to be friends? And Donovan's <laughs> like, get away from me. <laughs> but Black Cat still gets to, you know, uh, try to be friends. It's not against the law. Yeah. So you yeah. said uh, that you can actually do this on the spot? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm picturing a, a client screaming at me on the phone. Anger, anger, anger. Oh yeah, and that is a great time to do that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, you know, I've done the best I can and I'm defensive. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> and it hurts my feelings. You know, Absolutely. I've given everything I had and I'm being screamed at. Mm -hmm. So with practice, you can just do that right there at that point in time. Oh yeah. Say thank you so much for screaming at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that situation, a little like ho'oponopono is yeah. a great resource. Yeah. 
um, that, and we all know that your client screaming at you, it wasn't about you. That client is frustrated about a lot of stuff. Most likely their intention and their reality are not in alignment and they don't know what to do. They're feeling stuck. So they're just going to scream. You know, frustration comes from being unable to meet your goals, right? So I say, I want blankety blank to happen today, and then everything's happening to make this happen today. I'm like, no, I have to force it to be this way as opposed to going, oh, this is where we're at today. So your client had goals and expectations and hopes. At everything in their life probably depends on this happening just this way or everything will fall apart. They don't know how to recalibrate, how to make everything work with reality. So they're screaming at you. How can you make reality happen when I need non-reality to happen? Come on. <laughs> it's your job. <laughs> exactly. And I find um, like asking the permission, you know, on a soul to soul level to rarely will the other soul refuse right. the healing. Mm -hmm. um, because like the higher self is usually pretty open to that. It's it's us you know, in the 3D world, it's like, no, 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 you know. Exactly. Like, like, say, somebody in a coma is a, is a great example, too, that they can't literally give their permission. But when you offer it to them, the, the higher soul, the soul right. knows what, what is This needed. is correct. But still, the physical yeah. body can still reject. Yes. Um, one thing that I'll do when someone is desperate in need of love and I know that I'm going to be working with this person, and I really want them to not be horrible, is I will do what I said about bringing, to, you know, I ground, and I fill myself with divine love and earth love and whatever resonance feel like I will say whatever resonance will, is helping this person. They may need physical healing love, emotional healing, who knows what. And I bring it to my heart and I send it to the person. This is actually a common pranashakti, or it's a pranashakti technique. And then I'll anchor it with something. When I work with a client, I'll say, you know, put something by your bed or under your bed that can receive the energy, a rose quartz or, you know, a beloved object. If someone is in uh, mourning over someone, they may want something that connects with the person they're in mourning over. Put it near your bed. And then before I go to bed at night, I will do this process of sending the love energy to the person. And then I will take it from my body to the object. And if this person, if I don't know what they're like or you know what they have and I'm not telling them what I'm doing, I will just send it to their bed. And then the bed becomes the anchor, and all night long they're receiving the divine love that they most need mm -hmm. in their bed. Um, if someone is ill, I'll do it twice a day, in the morning when I wake up and at night before I go to bed, so that their waking time and their sleeping time is getting the essence that they need. Um, because, you know, we need different things in waking and sleeping energy. But it is amazing how this can impact someone's uh, attitude, even if they don't know what you're doing. Yes, I've done that even for people who don't know me. I don't know what they look like. I may or may not know their name. I just uh, get the connection through a client. Like a client will say, can you please send love to my mother for this or that purpose or, yeah. So um, we are very, very powerful beings. What we're going to do in the next meditation is we're gonna get back into alignment with our higher self, with our soul. And then we will check inside and see where inside ourselves do we need extra love and support. Just as a person seeing us in divine love, it may magnify where they're lacking love. As we invite our soul self to be connected with self, we may find little nooks and crannies 
and bits and pieces that are below the frequency of love that suddenly feel very sharp and painful or um, blocked or whatever. As one with our soul, we will look inward and wherever we feel anything below the frequency of love, we will invite these elements to absorb love or to release. Because it could be you have just like little shards of the remaining energy of traumas earlier in this life that are just like stuck there. Maybe you held on to it as a reminder. I never want to do that again. So you like stick a pin in it and put it in my heart. So you may have all these like pins and needles and shards in your heart that are just reminders not to do that again. Uh, but now we can release them. They don't need to be there because now we're evolving to higher love. Now, if they choose to stay, then just send them love. Say, you know what, I'm going to give you a lot of love to nourish you. And you may find over time they kind of dissolve. You know, or they may say, you know what, I'm going to stick around for a while because I'm kind of interested in what's going on in your life going forward, but you'll notice it won't hurt so much. And so you just keep filling yourself with love, and it will do what it does. Okay. And then after that, in the same meditation, so get comfy, we're then going to extend our energy out. I'm going to take us to a mandala. And after we connect with the mandala, from there, each of you will go to whatever grid network mandala or place you are drawn to. Don't think in your mind in advance. Your higher self will take you where you need to go. Okay? Great.